Salutations! I'm Phil, aka JC Servant, and this is a reading of my latest blog entry titled An Eternal Perspective. A number of years ago, I received the word that a beloved relative found out she had terminal cancer. I reached out to her, and her husband answered. I asked if I could talk to her, and he told me uh, that, ch that he would check with her. He returned, and he said, She'll talk to you, but she asked that you don't talk about religion. The request didn't surprise me. While I rarely spoke to her about my faith in God, the few occasions uh, I did reveal the deep differences we had on questions such as the very existence of a deity. I replied that I understood and that I respect her request. I asked how she felt, and we eventually began chatting about finances. However, at some point, she abruptly changed the subject. I don't understand how a living God can send people to hell simply because they chose the wrong faith. I have met monks with more faith than any Christian I have met. It makes no sense. She continued to rant about exactly how she felt about the Christian idea of God. Wishing to honor what I agreed to earlier, I let her do so without interruption. When she finally came to the end of her stream of thought, I responded, I agreed not to talk about religion, but you bring up some important points. Do you want an answer? She did not. I can, of course, discuss those particular concerns with anyone who sincerely seeks answers. In fact, I've written several blog entries on them. Uh, and, However, as the saying goes, the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart. People do not want to hear the answers because they, know, they just want to continue to live their way without a true challenge to their worldview. Anger towards Christianity and the truth that God laid out is nothing new. Uh, I've heard many atheists and agnostics echo the same sentiment that my relative did. Their anger defies logic for two reasons. First, if one believes that God does not exist, why do you feel such anger? Who has offended you? Certainly no one feels angry at uh, children believe in Santa Claus, even though we all know he does not truly exist to deliver presents. And they're not angry at Santa Claus. So how can you be angry at something that doesn't exist? Second, and more importantly, in pondering this argument, one must consider perspective. Here's an analogy. A parent tells a child that they must take a trip to the dentist. The child has a cavity and it must be drilled. The child yells and screams. She does not want to go. She can only think about the pain and does not understand why her mother would insist on taking her to such a horrific place. She yells. She screams. She says she hates her mother. She may even believe it. Yet, the mother acts out of love. She knows the pain is necessary. As an older, wiser, mature adult, the mother understands that this will ultimately help the child enjoy her adult years with a full set of teeth intact. The mother has a different perspective. Unfortunately, due to the child's youth and her limited perspective, the daughter cannot understand the reason that they must take the trip, no matter how the mother explains it. With this analogy, we must ask a question. Assuming that God exists, is it possible he has a perspective different to our own? Could his ways differ from our ways? Could his understanding vary from our own? And may be possible that it's something that upsets us when we think through it. Personally, I not only believe in this possibility, but I think it's likely. And if you can accept that premise, then you can also understand the problem of arguing against God. It would be the height of stubborn pride to shake one's fist in the air and declare that one will not follow God simply because they don't agree with his direction. The road to hell is paved by such hubris. None of this necessarily proves the existence of God. It only provides a small argument in support of the Christian God. Such a discussion exceeds the scope of this video. However, I hope that everyone can see the argument to walk away from God simply because you struggle to understand uh, his ways in and of itself lacks logical cohesion. With that, it follows that the Bible says over and over again that we need humility to come before the living God. We need to understand not only our place before him, but our own brokenness before we can even approach him. If we do, we will find hope, love, and forgiveness waiting for us. For he is rich in mercy to all who seek him. Yet his wrath awaits those who continue to spur his son. John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. That's John 3.36 again. 
So I hope this 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 helps and and, and makes you think through a few things. Uh, and and if it's an, if if it does help, if it doesn't help, if you got thoughts, if you got further questions, you think I can help you out with, by all means, uh, respond to me here on the YouTube video or on my blog. Hit me up at Twitter. I'm at JC Servant, and I'll be happy to do anything that I can by His grace and mercy to help give you some of the answers that you're looking for. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and as always, stay safe and may God bless you. Peace in the storm and joy.